So now we're, we're going to speak about next is the process that happens directly after fertilization. That's the idea of cleavage. So this developing embryo will undergo specific events known as cleavages. And cleavage is just going to be considered the second step of embryonic development. This idea of cleavage is the idea of going from a unicellular zygote all the way to a multicellular embryo. And this is the process that it undergoes, cleavaging. So now, let's take a look at a bit of introduction to the process. So, what we're going to see first is that the cleavages that a zygote undergoes are simply going to be a series of rapid mitotic divisions. We are no longer going to need any sort of mitosis. We're not trying to make gametes. We just are trying to make a lot of cells. So we're going to have a rapid series of mitotic divisions that are going to cause this embryo, this zygote for right now, to develop. This development is going to be centered around something known as the cell cycle. So if you think about the cleavage cell cycle, as an embryo is cleavaging, its cell cycle is going to be a little bit different than the regular cell cycle that we're so used to because the cleavage cell cycle mainly consists of only two phases. It's mainly the S plus the M phases. And if you remember way back when we talked about the cell cycle in Bio 1, S stands for synthesis phase and M stands for mitosis phase. And that's really all we're going to care about right now because all we want to do is make lots of cells. We want to make lots of cells during cleavaging. So we're only going to do the synthesis and mitosis phases. What phases are we going to sort of forego or at least not put as many resources into? Those would be G1 and G2. So there's not going to be G1 and G2 phases. And basically what we're saying here is there's not going to be as much G1 or G2 as we've seen in normally. These are growth phases. And thus there's not going to be that much protein synthesis. There's still will be, you know, a little bit. I'm saying no here, but generally speaking, there'll be a little bit, but very negligible amount. Why are we not doing these critical parts of the cell cycle? Because they're not critical right now. Right now we just need to make lots of cells. And why are we going to skip these phases? These phases are specifically tied to growth. And we're not trying to grow the embryo. We're just trying to make lots of cells of this embryo. So what we're going to say is that this is all because right now we do not want any technically speaking growth in quotes, let's say, of cell size directly. So we don't want growth of cell size. We want growth, we want an increase in cell quantity, but we don't want an increase in cell size right now. Why is that? Well, this is because we want to, right now, our goal is to increase the cell number, the quantity of cells with a smaller cell size, a smaller cell size after each division. Remember how we said that cleavages are going to be mitotic divisions without growth when we talked about animal development? This is why we do that. This is what we were talking about. We're reiterating and bringing back something we talked about this semester already. So essentially, you increase the cell number without increasing the cell size. That's going to cause the embryo size as a whole, the embryo size. What's going to happen to that? that's going to actually stay relatively small. Stay small. So now you're wondering, or hopefully you're wondering, why would you be doing this? And that's a question we'll answer in just a second, why we're continually going, continuously continuing to keep this embryo small instead of making it big at the onset. And that will be talked about when we talk about the regulation of this cell cycle later on in this lecture. But for right now, trust me, this is what happens, and this is going to be important later on. Overall, what we state is that every time you make a new cell during this process, during cleavaging, each new cell, is going to be called a blastomere. A blastomere, okay? Each new cell is called a blastomere. Keep that in mind because this is a term that will come up again. So, in addition to this idea of the cell cycle that's going to regulate cleavage patterns, we're also going to be understanding or need to understand the formation of something called a cleavage furrow. A cleavage furrow is just going to be, as a definition, 
It's just the indentation. It's an indentation that forms in the cell surface, in cell surface, after cytokinesis. After cytokinesis. So we're going to have, because we're having a lot of cleavage events, we're having a lot of mitotic divisions, and the culmination of a mitotic division, the end of a mitotic division, is a cytokinesis event. What we're going to see is that a cleavage furrow will form before, after, right, right after this event, and that's going to be something that's of interest when we talk about cleavage patterns a little bit later on. Now, Speaking of those patterns, we can broadly mention them and initially mention them as the fact that the pattern of division, the way that cleavaging will happen in an organism, the pattern of division is directly affected by a process, by a variable. And that's going to be by something known as the yolk presence. So every developing zygote and thus developing embryo will have yolk within it. And this yolk uh, composition will include the following. Yolk is just going to be a material. It's a rather thick material of proteins. It will also include fats and phospholipids, all as a uh, attempt to help give this developing embryo some nutrients, some sort of starting building blocks to help its own development. But this yolk specifically is going to actually interfere, not technically interfere, but at least affect the way that the cleavages will happen because it's a large, thick structure that's going to affect the way that the cell actually divides. And this effect is all dependent on the species. So it depends on um, the species and also the embryo needs. So if the embryo needs a lot of yolk, then that's going to affect the way that cleavage happens. If the embryo needs a little bit of yolk, that's also going to differently affect the way that cleavage happens. So that's our basic intro to cleavaging. Now what we're going to look at are, um, broadly speaking, uh, the stages of the process to conclude this flowchart. The stages are going to simply be when we need to go from a zygote is one cell, right? We all start off as one original cell called the zygote and we will undergo cleavage. We will undergo our first cleavage event and our first cleavage event will then create an embryo. An embryo from a developmental standpoint and the developmental division must be two or more cells. That's a developing embryo. That's when you have a developing embryo. Prior to that, all you have is a zygote. And then upon this first cleavage, what have you completed then? You have thus completed fertilization. And now you're starting real embryonic development. Why embryonic? Because now you are an embryo. Now the structure is an embryo because it's two or more cells. One cell, first cleavage turns into two cells, two will turn into four, etc. So now let's talk about humans very quickly to conclude. Humans in terms of stages. Humans will have their first division, the first cleavage, therefore, about 24 hours after the sperm binds. On average, 24 hours after sperm binds. And that could be anywhere, uh, you know, there's a range to this. 12 to 36 is what we said prior. We'll say on average about 24 hours. Once that has happened, even though that takes a long time, once the first division happens, then there's just going to be tons and tons and tons of division. There's going to be lots of division after. So it takes a little bit of time for the first one, but once the first one happens, the floodgates have opened, and there will be many cleavage events, so much so that the eventual formation of a blastula will, will occur. So all of these cleavage events will result in a blastula. Now remember, each new cell, as you're undergoing cleavage, is called a blastomere. A blastula is a new point of embryonic development to remember because it strictly must contain at least 128 blastomeres. So it must contain 128 new cells as a result of a cleavage event. And that's going to be a blastula, therefore. Once the blastula has formed, it will then form a hollow ball on its interior. So it forms a hollow ball-like structure within it, and the cells will surround it, the 128 cells. And on the inside of this blastula, we then would consider the inside when it is hollow. It's called a blastocele. These are terms we've talked about before, but we'll just reiterate them. 
for the purpose of development. That's called a blastocele. And a blastocele is simply going to be a fluid-filled cavity that will be an important part of the overall development, as we know from animal development, when we talked about animal diversity in this uh, course a little bit earlier in the semester. So that covers our first look at cleavages. We're now going to get a little bit more specific, and we're going to be looking at specific moments and steps and stages associated with cleavage patterns in different organisms.